Number 10. Zambia Crocodile Attack Amelie Osborne Smith is extremely lucky to be alive after being attacked by a vicious crocodile while rafting in the African country of Zambia. Amelia was just 18 years old when she nearly lost her life to the wild reptile. She had gone on vacation to Zambia from her home in Andover, Hampshire for the adventure of a lifetime, and she got exactly what she wanted. While whitewater rafting down the Zambezi River, a crocodile came out of nowhere and tried to kill her. The crocodile bit down on her leg, then moved to drag her under the water. Even after being discharged from the hospital, she is still having flashbacks and nightmares of the attack. Amelia described her reaction to the attack, saying her brain went into overdrive. Her life never flashed before her eyes. She never had any regrets. She just thought of how to get out of the situation and reacted to what was happening. All she could think of doing was fighting off the reptile and getting out of its jaws before it got her in a death roll. And she did it too, struggling enough that the crocodile let go before it can do any fatal damage. But it still did some pretty significant damage. Her leg was ripped apart. Her hip had been dislocated, and her right foot was smashed. It was looking as though she might have to get her leg removed, or it simply wouldn't work again. But luckily, doctors were able to fix her up, and Amelia went to go on to make a full recovery. She sure was lucky. Number 9. Crocodile in the Boat At the Kakadu National Park in Australia, four people went out at night to do a bit of fishing. Everything was going well. The friends were having a great time and then a 15-foot crocodile literally launched itself into their boat and tried to eat all of them at the same time. This thing burst out of the water as if it had a rocket tied to its tail. It jumped into their boat and began thrashing around like a fish desperate to get back in the water. While three of the friends were uninjured during the sudden and rather unexpected assault, a 32-year-old local from New South Wales ended up being injured. He wasn't hurt too bad, though his friends did have to take him to the nearest hospital. That is, after they managed to flip the crocodile out of their boat. But here's the deal with this story. It's really not surprising. These guys were literally fishing on the South Alligator River. There are signs all over the banks of the river warning people of crocodile attacks. One of the signs even explicitly warns that crocodiles have been biting boats, stealing fish, and harassing people. If you're going out here at night to do some fishing, don't be surprised if a crocodile launches itself right onto your lap. Number 8. The Worst Hotel Kiana Hummel, 18 years old, was on what was supposed to be a relaxing holiday before starting college and becoming a fully-fledged adult. But what should have been a final hoorah before going off to school turned into one of the worst nightmares imaginable. The teenager was chilling out in Mexico with one of her friends when she came face to face with a deadly reptile. Kiana was staying at the Marriott Resort in Puerto Vallarta. According to what she told reporters from her hospital bed, it was just after midnight when she was greeted by the 12-foot-long monster crocodile. She and her friend had opted for a late-night swim, but before they even got to the water, the crocodile slithered out of the ocean like the biggest and meanest creature they'd ever seen and grabbed Kiana by her leg. It then made a quick retreat, trying to pull her into the water with it. And this wasn't even at a lake. It was at the beach. Thankfully, there was a bystander nearby who heard Kiana's screams and ran to help. Kiana beat the crocodile on its big nose and her friend and the bystander helped to pull her away. The crocodile eventually gave up, and the group was able to get Kiana to safety, but she had already suffered extensive damage. She survived and kept all her limbs, but the muscle and tissue damage in her leg, including damage to the bone, means she's going to have a hard time walking and a slight limp for quite a while. Number 7. Gator Selfie A tourist in the Philippines got a little too camera happy at the Amaya View Amusement Park in Cagayan de Oro City. The tourist, 68-year-old Nehemias Japata, climbed into a pool with a 12-foot crocodile just so he could take a selfie with it. If that sounds stupid and dangerous, that's because it is. The elderly man got into position, readied his camera to take the selfie that would make all his grandkids jealous, and then the crocodile attacked him. Nehemias was visiting the amusement park with his family to celebrate his birthday when he got the brilliant idea for the selfie. He stood with his phone in his right hand, a big smile on his face, and his left arm dangling by his side. It was the dangling arm that seemed to entice the crocodile. It lunged, grabbed the arm, and dragged the man into the water. It happened in just a split second, leaving his terrified family screaming. Amazingly, Nehemias was able to escape. He broke free of the animal's grip and climbed out of the pool without any serious injury. And even more, he managed to get away with one of the crocodile's teeth as a souvenir. He did suffer some minor injuries, needing to have surgery on his left arm where the crocodile tore it, but nothing life-threatening. 
The only bummer for him is that he never did get that selfie that he wanted so badly. Number 6. One Lucky Dog Banjo is a 5-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier, a gorgeous little dog who happens to be extremely lucky. While Banjo was out with his owner on their usual morning walk, he encountered a massive saltwater crocodile significantly larger than him. The crocodile was at least 9 feet long, with rows of sharp teeth that could easily make quick work of Banjo the dog. But here's the craziest part of what happened. As Banjo was playing on the beach, splashing in water only up to his knees, the crocodile appeared from nowhere and bit him right on the butt. It then ran away without even trying to eat the dog. It was a crocodile version of a hit and run, with the crocodile literally just puncturing the dog's backside with its teeth and then running away as if nothing happened. Banjo had to be taken to the vet and treated from the lacerations on his back, but he is expected to make a full recovery. After a bit of rest and relaxation at home, Banjo will be back to his old jolly self. How would you react if a crocodile bit your dog on the butt? Would you avoid that beach for the rest of your life, or would you seek revenge? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 5. A Good Friend A man in Australia had his head and body bitten by a crocodile and nearly lost his entire top half. If it hadn't been for his brave friend, the individual probably would have had his head swallowed by the angry reptile. The two friends were swimming in the waters north of the Lockhart River, located in the furthest northern reaches of Australia. These waters are known to be infested with crocodiles, but the victim in this situation was in his 20s. He didn't care if there were crocs swimming nearby. He had never been attacked before. As we all know, it's hard to be scared of something until it actually happens. Well, it actually happened. The friends were splashing around, cooling in the water, and having a jolly old time. Then, one of them had half of his body inside a crocodile's mouth. Luckily for him, both these guys were soldiers. They were trained to be cool in intense situations. The other guy managed to get the crocodile off his friend, though the crocodile's teeth shredded part of his arm in the process. Nonetheless, his brave act allowed his friend to get away, and they swam as fast as they could while leaving a murky trail of blood behind them. They were ultimately rescued by an army barge and then airlifted to the closest hospital. Number 4. A Long Way Home Two men in Australia, locals from the Northern Territory, survived a crocodile attack and then had to make a harrowing journey back home. This journey saw them marching three days through the inhospitable Australian wasteland. These guys were in their 30s when they went up crocodile-infested waters in their boat, what was supposed to be a relaxing getaway, but when their boat collided with an object, the two men were forced to jump out of the vessel. Neither acted quickly enough to activate their emergency beacon before the whole ship was underwater. Then as the men were trying to swim out of the river, a crocodile attacked. They managed to reach the shore before the crocodile could kill either one of them, but the croc didn't give up. The men had to scream and throw sticks and rocks at it from the shore just to keep it from coming after them. It was lucky that they survived the crocodile-infested waters. Now they had to make their way home. Considering the extreme temperature, no bottled water, no food, and no supplies, it was a miracle that they made it back to civilization. They walked for three full days, drank their own urine, and avoided crocodiles at every turn. Number 3. The Resort Crocodile 12-year-old Charlie Bull compared the pain he felt when a crocodile tried to eat him as literally being stabbed. Charlie, along with his mother, are now warning people about the dangers of being attacked by a crocodile while vacationing in Mexico. Their dire warning comes after a game of hide-and-seek that Charlie was playing with some friends on the pool deck of their resort in Cancun. Charlie was hiding on the staircase which led down to the lagoon when he became the victim of a monster crocodile. Estimated at roughly 13 feet, as crocodiles do, it launched itself out of the lagoon and grabbed Charlie's leg. Luckily for Charlie, he has great instincts. He grabbed the stairs to keep himself from being fully yanked into the lagoon by the crocodile. He also screamed at the top of his lungs until his mother rushed to the scene. But by then, he had lost his grip on the stairs and was under the water. His screams were gone and nobody could see him. It was a group of men who actually saved Charlie. They rushed into the water and pulled Charlie out of the crocodile's mouth while beating it on the head and covering its eyes. In the end, Charlie's vacation was extended by four weeks while he recovered in the hospital. Since then, People Magazine reported that Cancun's Club Med has put up some fresh warning signs about getting too close to the water. Number 2. The Jumping Crocodile In Australia, the crocodiles can jump. A local wildlife tour operator was lucky to escape with both his hands after a crocodile jumped out of a river and tried to bite one of them off. His name is Sean Dearly, 
and he was attacked in the Adelaide River, a place renowned the world over for literally having jumping crocodiles. These huge reptiles are famous for lurching vertically out of the water to catch pieces of chicken or other meaty treats dangled off the sides of tourist boats. Sean has done it 1,000 times, but in this case, he got sloppy. According to CBS News, the 60-year-old wildlife expert had 18 tourists on his boat. He had warned them to keep their bodies inside at all times, but then he ignored his own advice, reaching over the edge of the boat to pick up the pole he just dropped. As he reached for it, a jumping crocodile did its thing. It jumped, bit down on Sean's arm, and tried to rip his hand off. Sean managed to pull away just in time, but not before the croc's teeth ripped apart a tendon, sliced his skin up, and crushed some of his bones. But perhaps even more amazing is that after Sean dropped off his boatload of tourists, he drove himself an hour to the nearest hospital in Palmerston. And number one, death by crocodile. In Sarawak, Malaysia, the body of a missing boy has been discovered, but not in the way locals would have liked. If you're a bit squeamish, this one's gonna be a little hard. This attack was horrendous and just about as gory as it gets. It all started on a Thursday night in November when 17-year-old Alex Rudy Roy Ali went out to the lakeshore with some friends. According to those very friends, they thought Alex jumped into the river. It was bizarre because Alex hadn't been planning on swimming. There was a sudden splash and he was gone, apparently jumping in the water for no reason. His friends waited a few minutes, but he never resurfaced. And that was when they decided to go for help. But Alex wasn't discovered until Saturday morning when the search and rescue team finally came across Alex's corpse. He had no more limbs left it was pretty obvious that his friends had gotten it all wrong. Alex hadn't jumped into the river on purpose. He had been attacked, dragged into the river, and then dismembered by a hungry crocodile. The crocodile bit off both of his legs and both his arms, leaving nothing but his torso floating in the water, just under a mile from where he was last seen. Number 10. In May 2014, in Costa Rica, a man jumped off a bridge and into the Tarcales River and was eaten by some hungry crocodiles. According to the local police reports, the man, identified as Omar de Jesus Hiron, was causing a disturbance on the bridge early in the evening. The police were forced to remove the belligerent man from the bridge, and he made his way to a bar. He got himself good and drunk, returned to the bridge a few hours later, and then leaped into the river. It's unclear what he was trying to do exactly, but he was heavily under the influence. Spectators who were there for this dramatic plunge said that once the man went under the water, he never came back out. If you're familiar with this particular river in Costa Rica, you'll already understand why. The bridge itself is situated near the popular beach of Jaco. It's become a popular spot in recent years for tourists to stop and watch the American crocodiles thrashing in the river below. It's a known crocodile hangout where people even make YouTube videos of themselves feeding the crocodiles. Obviously, this is the last bridge you want to jump off of. Nonetheless, Omar took the leap. Some pieces of clothing were found at the scene. The Red Cross search team was unable to find his body after looking through the night. It wasn't until later on that a human head was found washed up on the shore. While unconfirmed, authorities do believe it belonged to Omar. Number nine, Swan River shark attack. In Australia last year in 2021, a shark attacked a man in a river we usually think about shark attacks happening at the beach, but in Australia, they can basically happen anywhere there's water. This individual, in his 50s, was bitten by a bull shark so severely that he suffered critical injuries and had to be hurried to the hospital. According to the animal experts, it's not that shocking. Marine ecologist Johan Gustafsson said bull sharks are common in all major waterways across Australia, except for in the south, where it's a little too cold. It's just that they're shy and don't usually try to bite people. This was the first shark attack in the Perth River in 50 years. The only good news is that you'll never find a great white shark in a river system. There's just not enough raw meat for great whites to swim in such shallow water, but it is perfect for bull sharks who prefer having their babies upstream and then migrating to the coast as their babies get bigger. Not so lucky for us humans. As for the man who was bitten by one of these massive apex predators, he did survive. It was described as a random incident, one we probably won't see again in our lifetime. Number eight, piranhas in Argentina. If you don't wanna be eaten alive by piranhas, you should do yourself a favor and stay away from the rivers in Argentina. 
It was just last year in 2021 that a 13-year-old girl had her toe bitten off and 30 people were left with terrible injuries during a massive piranha attack. The young girl had to be taken to the hospital for a skin graft, while the other 30 people suffered relatively minor cuts and gouges, and all because a few locals were trying to cool down during a heat wave. According to local Argentinian news sources, locals had descended on a popular sunbathing spot along the Piranha River. Some were soaking up in the extreme heat, while others were trying to escape it in the water. Those who were splashing around in the lake became the victims of a swimming horde of piranhas. They entered the river like a cloud of death and bit everyone they can find. The water filled with blood, people were screaming, and everyone was trying to get out of the water. The lifeguard couldn't believe his eyes. He was struggling to deal with 30 people all suffering injuries at once, and a little girl missing her toe. But it wasn't the first time something like this happened. Because piranhas move in massive shoals, when they do attack, their victims almost always number in the double digits. In 2013, on Christmas Day, over 60 people were injured in a very similar piranha attack in the same river. This one had dozens of people being bitten and over 20 children suffering injuries. Number seven, a dead kayaker in North Carolina. North Carolina may just be the deadliest place in the United States of America to go kayaking. The French Broad River's most recent victim was identified as Florida resident Delmer Melvin Garat. Deputies with the Buncombe County Sheriff's Office pulled his body out of Ledges River Park, where it had gotten pinned between some rocks. His death marked the fourth kayaking fatality of the year for Western North Carolina rivers. Nobody knows exactly what happened to Delmer, but it seems like he lost control on the rapids. A rescue swimmer arrived on scene and couldn't even make it to the flipped kayak because the current was so strong. They had to wait to reach the kayak in an inflatable boat. Only then were rescuers able to free the kayaker from his trap, which took them 30 minutes. If it took a team of experts half an hour to get his body out, there was no chance he could have done it himself in the last few seconds he was alive. The other three deaths were just as shocking. A man named Matthew Ray, just 19, got pinned to the right side of the rapids in the Green River Narrows and died as his friends tried to pull him to safety. In April, William Greer from Atlanta died in the Linville River. In March, Maria Noakes, a champion kayaker from New Zealand, passed away on the Chioa River. She had been kayaking with her two young sons and a group of friends, but they lost sight of her. The next time they saw her, Maria was dead. What's the worst thing you've ever seen happen during a kayaking trip? Let us know about it in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe before the end of the video. Number six, terrifying croc attack. In the crocodile infested waters of Leaders Creek near Gunpoint, about 24 miles from the city of Darwin in the Northern Territory of Australia, something crazy happened. For three long hours, a 72 year old man fought off a barrage of attacking crocodiles. He had been checking crab spots with his friends in a small aluminum boat when a crocodile intentionally capsized it. The giant reptile smashed into the side of the boat so hard that it tipped them both into the water. Sadly, this was the end of the road for one of the crab fishermen. The younger man got stuck underneath the boat when it capsized and had no way to escape. The older man tried to save him, but was thwarted by the evil crocodiles. By the time the older man managed to get the crocodiles away from the boat, his friend was dead. He then had to push the boat towards the relative safety of the mangroves while using whatever he could find to fight off the crocodiles. In the end, he managed to get the boat between himself and the crocodiles with his back up against the mangrove trees. He screamed for help for three hours in the water before other crab fishermen heard him yelling and came to the rescue. Number five, an unexpected whirlpool. In 2018, Donald Wright was as healthy and spry as the best of them at 64 years old. He was an avid outdoorsman and loved exploring the scenic parts of his home state of Arkansas. Sadly, his love for the outdoors would lead to his death when he was sucked to the bottom of the river and killed in a freak accident. The accident happened when Donald bypassed Dead Man's Curve during his weekend trip and went on down a different path on the river. What he didn't realize was that by bypassing Dead Man's Curve, he himself would soon become a dead man. He came across a whirlpool, a giant maelstrom of doom spinning in the center of the river. By the time Donald saw it and realized what was happening, it was too late. He was already in its area of control. 
His kayak was sucked down to the bottom of the whirlpool, where Donald drowned. It was definitely the last thing Donald expected when he set out on that day on his kayak. And yet sinkholes are fairly common in the northern part of Arkansas. A whirlpool can form when a sinkhole collapses beneath the limestone floor of a river. It's basically like having a drain suddenly appear at the bottom of a pool. This one was so big, he was able to suck a man and his boat down to the bottom. Number four, the Houdini of the Ganges. In 2019 in India, a magician who fancied himself a modern Houdini drowned trying to escape from a river. One of his colleagues said he sacrificed himself for magic, but really, it wasn't much of a sacrifice. This was a failed stunt by Chanchal Lahiri that left him being hoisted out of the Ganges River, still bound in chains. Lahiri went by the stage name Mandrake. He had himself lowered into the Ganges River in Kolkata, stuck in a straitjacket and wrapped with chains and ropes. His plan was to escape his binds with just a few seconds, then spring out of the water to the great applause of his audience. What happened instead was that he ran out of air before he even managed to get the straitjacket off. His body was discovered by divers later that evening. It's not clear what exactly went wrong. Mandrake had done the same thing in 2003 and successfully escaped the chains and ropes, but he must have experienced some unforeseen difficulty once submerged. The crowd expected him out within 25 seconds. They stood there on the banks of the river and waited 10 minutes. That was about the point people realized something horrible had happened, and they had to call in the divers. Number three, Florida River Otters. Florida is another one of those places where you're really taking your life into your own hands by getting into a river. What was supposed to be a relaxing kayaking trip for a 77-year-old woman named Sue Spector turned out to be anything but. She was with a group of 10 friends on a Sunday morning in 2018 when they embarked down the Brandon River. Everything was going just swimmingly until a curious otter climbed onto the front of Sue's kayak. At first, it was pretty miraculous. It's not every day somebody has an otter just a couple feet from them, but the cute little creature turned out to be a diabolical monster. The otter jumped on a Sue's face like a crazed monkey infected with rabies. The animal clawed and scratched. It bit her arm and tried to rip her ears off and it even tried to eat her nose. As she tried desperately to fight the animal off, her flimsy kayak flipped over. This left her in the cold water, blind and battling for her life. The otter was trying to murder her and she was running out of air to breathe. Sue was saved by her husband who beat the otter with his paddle until it let go of his wife. Only then was she able to upright her kayak and take a big gulp of air. But even with the otter gone into the wild, Sue was in deep trouble. She had to go straight to the hospital for stitches and a rabies treatment. Number two, tubing tragedy. One of the worst tubing tragedies in the history of the US happened in 2021. It was Wednesday, June the 16th. A family from Eden went tubing with some relatives who were up visiting from Indiana. In total, there were nine family members. They took their tubes and went out onto the Dan River just before eight o'clock in the evening. It was already getting dark, which is not the best time to have a boat adventure. At some point during the tubing session, the tubes were sent flying over the Duke Energy Dam and five people were killed. It was absolutely horrific. Four people were rescued, three members of the Eden family and one of the teenage kids from Indiana. Soon after, four dead bodies were pulled out of the river, including that of two adults, one teenager and a seven-year-old. The final body was found the next morning when somebody called 911 because they just saw a corpse floating in the water. Nobody was really at fault here. The family shouldn't have been out at night, but there also should have been more signs about the danger of the nearby dam. Those driving the boats didn't even realize they were coming up on a sheer drop, leading to something nobody in a swimming suit could possibly survive. And number one, river stunt gone wrong. A teenager in India was making a TikTok video in a flooded river when things went very wrong. This was in 2019, and the boy's name was Avzal, a teen in Adalpur village. He and two of his friends were making stunt videos, diving off large blocks into a massively flooded river. The flood was so extreme, the river was gushing over the edges of the blockade and into the street. The teens were running up to the edge, hopping onto blocks, and then diving in for fun. But what started as fun ended in terrible tragedy. The teens filmed Afzal 
plunge into the floodwaters. Seconds later, they realized he was struggling to keep his head up. One of the other boys jumped in to save him, but it was no good. The attempted rescuer had to get himself out of the water before it pulled him down as well. Before anyone could even comprehend the seriousness of the situation, Afzal had drowned and his body had vanished. It wasn't discovered until a day later by a team with the National Disaster Response Force. Number 10. Porcupine Attack in Brazil Incidents involving humans and porcupines are pretty rare, and when it comes to fatalities, it's just not something that really happens. Nobody's been murdered by a porcupine, and they rarely even attack people. And yet in 2014, a woman in Brazil had an unfortunate run-in with one of these pokey animals. She got over 250 quills stuck into her scalp. Ouch. How did it happen? Did she find the porcupine rummaging through her trash or hiding under her porch? No to both. It actually happened in a way you would never imagine. The woman, identified as Sandra Nabucco, had the porcupine fall on her head from the sky. At least that's what it seemed like when the thing landed on her head. She had been walking her dog in Gavea, located south of Rio de Janeiro. Everything was completely normal. She was just strolling down the street when she felt a thud on her head. She told a Brazilian TV network the pain was enormous. She felt the spike sticking out of her scalp and had to be rushed to the hospital. There were 272 of the spines and it took several hours of surgery to get them all pulled out. But the porcupine didn't just fall from space. It had climbed up a lamppost and then slipped and fell at the exact moment Mrs. Nabucco was walking underneath it. She got a full head of quills, but the porcupine survived. When speaking with the news, Miss Nabucco remained positive. She said even though the pain was tremendous, she at least saved the animal's life. Falling on her head broke its fall. Number 9. Bulldog Bella May A bulldog named Bella May had a seriously unfortunate encounter with a porcupine and learned a lesson she'll never forget. She tangled with the wrong porcupine and was left with 500 quills embedded in her face. If you think Mrs. Nabucco had a bad with 272 on her head, Imagine how the poor dog felt with 500 stuck in her nose, mouth, and eyes. The dog was in some serious misery. Luckily, the owner was able to rush Bella May to a veterinarian hospital in Oklahoma. There, the bulldog underwent emergency surgery to have as many of the prickling spines removed from her face and feet as possible. But even when the veterinarians were done, Bella May still had some quills stuck inside her body. She's expected to make a full recovery but will probably never be the same dog again. According to Leonardo Bays, one of the veterinarians at the hospital, this was the most horrific porcupine attack he had ever seen perpetrated against a pet. That's saying something considering this is a huge issue in Oklahoma, where dogs are known for going after porcupines. That's exactly how Bella May ended up in the situation. It was the end of July in 2012, when she and her human family went down to the local pond. There also happened to be a porcupine at the pond, who didn't appreciate Bella May sticking her nose so close. Number 8. Eating a Quill A 49-year-old woman was sent to the ER because she was experiencing shortness of breath and major chest pains. It was late 2016, and the woman thought she was going to die. To make matters worse for her, the pain in her chest increased whenever she tried to lay down and relax. What she didn't realize was that she had accidentally eaten a porcupine quill. Yeah, she had a porcupine quill stuck in her body, close to poking right through her heart. Here's what you won't believe. The victim of the porcupine quill went to a different emergency room the week before, but was sent home. Doctors said she was having a panic attack, but of course, that wasn't the case. When she visited the hospital the second time, it was pretty obvious she was in dire condition. Doctors quickly found fluid flowing in a sac around her heart. They also found a defect on the wall of her aorta, this is a major blood vessel in the human body. Doctors drained the fluid from around her heart, then had to repeat the procedure three days later. They had to keep doing this over and over again. They also noticed that the defect in the wall of her aorta had gotten larger. She was bleeding internally. Doctors had to perform surgery, putting the woman on total circulatory arrest. This is when they stop all blood from flowing in the body, which allows them to look at her aorta. This was when they found the porcupine quill. It was easily removed. The damaged section of the blood vessel was taken care of and the woman made a full recovery. When doctors told her what they had found, she admitted to having an incident with her dog several weeks earlier. 
but she hadn't realized that while she was pulling the quills out of her beloved canine, one of them had gotten into her body. That small piece of porcupine quill poked a hole in her esophagus, then worked its way into her aorta and nearly caused her to bleed to death on the inside. Number 7. Injured Raven Back in 2013, a poor raven was attacked by a porcupine. It's not every day that a porcupine goes after a bird, but maybe it really didn't like the way the raven was looking at it. Whatever the case, the young bird was seriously injured. It had a quill stuck through its face, which would have made it impossible to do ordinary bird things. For the bird, its life was already forfeit. It was like a deer with a broken leg. The injury wasn't fatal, but it would prevent it from flying or feeding, thereby causing the bird to eventually starve to death. But don't worry, this story has a happy ending. This young raven was spotted perched on a fence by a resident of the Canadian province of Nova Scotia. Gertie Clearly of the small town of Elmsdale picked the raven up in her hands and very carefully pulled the quills out of its face and body, one by one. She saved the bird's life, then let it fly back into the wilderness. But the raven wasn't ready to leave yet. When she opened her door the next morning, the bird was sitting on her doorstep. Clearly, it had taken a shine to its savior. According to what Gertie told local CTV News, the bird hung around for a few days and then eventually flew off. Number 6. Tiger vs. Porcupine A tiger at the Calgary Zoo got in a little bit of trouble with a porcupine near the end of the summer of 2021. Well, it was actually the porcupine that found itself on the wrong side of the fence. Somehow, the porcupine managed to sneak its way into the tiger's habitat. As you can probably imagine, the big cat was not thrilled to see a spiky creature wandering around its territory. The female Amur tiger, named Sarma, attacked the porcupine, and she paid the price. Veterinarians at the zoo had to remove more than 100 quills from Sarma's paw, from where she had tried to smack the evading porcupine. It was quite the ordeal for the tiger, but she did make a full recovery. As for the sneaky porcupine who managed to break into her enclosure, nobody knows how it got inside. It's something of a rascal at the zoo, and maybe it just wanted to be friends with Sarma. Either way, let's help both parties learn their lesson. Number 5. Mahalo the Dog Mahalo the Dog comes from the Canadian province of Saskatchewan. In 2015, she was hunted and brutally attacked by a porcupine. The dog was injected with dangerous barbs, and some almost piercing the animal's heart and lungs. It happened while Mahalo was playing with two other dogs near the border of Montana. The porcupine managed to hit all three canines with its quills, but Mahalo took the brute of the attack. The pup had to undergo surgery to get the barbs taken out, casting her owner a whopping $8,000. Plus, Mahalo's owner had to take weeks off work to travel back and forth from its home to a major veterinary hospital to get treatment for his beloved pup. The only good news is that Mahalo made a full recovery and her owner Dennis managed to raise $10,000 to pay for her surgeries and to cover his losses from work. Number 4. Quilled to Death When a mountain lion got into a fight with a porcupine, there were no winners. The lion was part of the Teton Cougar Project of Kelly, a tracked animal living in the area of Jackson Hole. Researchers saw that the days leading up to Christmas 2014, the lion was perfectly healthy. Then she was discovered a month later, dead and filled with porcupine quills. A necropsy revealed the 16-month-old mountain lion had porcupine quills inside her chest cavity and pierced through her lungs. One of her lungs had completely failed, and she didn't live long after that. The researchers were able to put the rest of the puzzle together pretty easily. The mountain lion ate the porcupine for a snack, but the porcupine managed to get its quills into the breast at the same time. It was a lose-lose situation with both animals ending up dead. The truly sad part is the mountain lion was an orphan. Her mother had been killed in a savage attack by another mountain lion the previous spring, leaving the cub alone. During her short life, she overcame a lot of obstacles, having no female cat to guide her. But in the end, the lion was no match for the deadly quills of a porcupine. Number three, rescued bobcat. It was December of 2021 when Alan McGuire saw something small and hunched on the side of the road near Iron Mountain in Dickinson County. He pulled over to investigate, discovering a small bobcat, not much bigger than a house cat. It had been injured, but not by a car. Its face and chest were covered in porcupine quills. The cat was obviously suffering, and so Alan jumped in to rescue it. He put on some welding gloves, picked up the cat, 
and brought it home. With the help from his wife, Christina, and his daughter and her boyfriend, they plucked the quills from the bobcat. The worst was one that had gone straight up its right nostril. If you've ever pulled a hair out of your nose, just imagine what a porcupine quill would feel like. In the end, they got most of the quills out and then let the bobcat sleep in a pet carrier filled with blankets. In the morning, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources came to pick the beast up. She was transferred to the care of Beth Mata, member of the UP Wildlife Rehabilitation Kiwinaw Group. Since then, the bobcat has gained weight, gotten more energy, and just generally improved. Hopefully soon, the cat will be released back into the wild where it will live a long and healthy life. Number two, leopard versus porcupine. A very hungry leopard picked a fight with a porcupine in Kruger National Park, South Africa. Sometimes, hunger and desperation will push an animal to do things it knows it shouldn't. The leopard was so hungry, it just didn't care about the consequences. It fought the porcupine for about 30 minutes, then took a break. Wildlife photographer Mariette Landman captured the whole thing with her camera. She was on holiday at the National Park in 2021 when the prickly confrontation began. It happened on the main road right before her eyes. Amazingly, the fight went on for a total of 90 minutes. The leopard took three breaks to extract the porcupine quills from its paws and lick its wounds. And in the end, the porcupine proved too much of a hassle. The leopard walked away in one direction and the porcupine went in the other. It was a stalemate, although the leopard's paws were left covered in blood from the spiky quills. And number one, bitten by association. A Pennsylvania man was attacked by a rabid bobcat in the summer of 2019. His name is Alex Fink, and he was reaching into the crawl space underneath his front porch when the animal sprung. He had no idea there was a giant cat living underneath his home, and had never expected to be assaulted as he reached into the darkness of the crawl space. But what surprised him even more was that the bobcat's face was covered in spiky porcupine quills. Obviously, the bobcat had gotten into some serious trouble with a tough customer. Alex had his head, arms, and upper torso scratched and bitten by the angry bobcat. He tried to kick and punch the thing, but it was in a wild frenzy. He finally managed to get away and lock himself in his car, and then he drove to the hospital for treatment. The attack had gone on for so long that Alex told local news he thought it would never end. Sadly for the bobcat, it was put down by Pennsylvania Game Commission officers. When they did tests, they saw it was rabid, meaning it had been infected with rabies. Alex had to get all those necessary shots before he was discharged, otherwise he may have become rabid too. In the end, it was half the fault of the bobcat and half the fault of the porcupine. The bobcat may have been rabid, but it was the porcupine quills in his face that forced it into hiding under Alex's porch. Having the spikes stuck in its skin made the bobcat even more dangerous than it already was. Thanks for watching. Would you rather take 100 porcupine quills to the face or take your chances with a bobcat? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.